I actually um, saw him speak one time, Delia and I were at the Science Center. It just so happened that he was doing a book reading. Like he was an older guy, I guess probably he was in his 60s or something like yeah, that. Yeah, okay, okay. The book is called Love You Forever, and it's by the esteemed author, Robert Munch. And it's a great book about, and it's a great book about basically the cycle of life, about a, a mom who, as she watches her kid grow older and grow from a little boy to an old man, or not old man, but to a grown-up man, as she gets older and gets closer to the end of her years. So it's a very heartwarming story. First one is, I, I think it's a great story for kids uh, because it's a, it really tells the story of the cycle of life in a way that is easy to understand. Not every book can do that. And I think it's, it's uh, unlike other books that we've discussed, it's very straightforward. I think because it's so straightforward, I don't, I, I don't see that much to, to dis discuss or debate because it's, I find it very, it's just a very simple story. So it, maybe this is the kind of book that's more aimed at almost literally just children as opposed to other books, which try and kind of weave in larger themes that may not, um, you know, kids may not appreciate. For me, it reminded me a lot of Carl Rogers and oh. uncondi uh, mm. unconditional love in which regardless of what stage you are in life, your parents will always care for you and love you and, and be your supportive nurturer. You know, I'd have to go into a little bit more research for when Carl Rogers sort of came came about and its strength and how that affected Munch in writing this book, because really it, it's, it's what it is. It's just unconditional love. Mm -hmm. And, but you know, one thing, actually, one thing I, I do want to mention, I, a while ago, we talked about the book, The Giving Tree and how the mother, uh, like the tree, which was basically represented the mother was kind of a pushover and the child was always uh, kind of take, you could say it was taking advantage of the mother who is the tree. Whereas in this book, the, the boy basically grows up and instead of being like kind of a taker, he's, uh, he's, he's kind of trying to give back at the end because he's singing to his mother. And one, one thing that I was wondering is, do you think that there's something the mother did in this book as opposed to in the giving tree that made this child a little less uh, selfish? Or do you think it was just the, the nature of the child himself? For me, for me, I felt that the giving tree was, was sort of unrealistic and or the child was psychopathic, like a sociopath, <laughs> and or that, the, that, there, that it was all one-sided and that the mother actually wasn't effective at nurturing. Like it's the, and, and I think Douglas was speaking about capitalism and how giving isn't the same as loving. And so you can give the child objects, but that's not going to necessarily result in, in affection. And in this case, the mother gives affection rather than objects. And it's about the emotional stages of someone's life as they progress. So rather than their desires. This one, I feel almost like the mom just gives the kid space. The kid just lets, I mean, the mom just lets the kid be who they are in whatever stage and just puts up with it as opposed to trying to intervene. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. As John's going back, she's not giving stuff. She's just saying, yes, this is your stage. This is your space. I'm going to be there for you. You know what I mean? There's maybe not much else I can do to deal with your, you know, wild swings and your wild moments in these stage, but I'm just going to be there. That's all. And I guess that's the big difference, right? Because the tree didn't say that. The tree wasn't like, I'm just going to be there. You want that's a boat? True. You feeling glad? Okay, I'll just be there for you. Instead, it was like, oh, no, 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 I'll, I'll intervene. I'll get this. I'll try and fix it. You know what I mean? So the mother wasn't trying to fix anything. She was just there in a supporting role. Yeah, exactly. And then I guess at the end, it kind of, and it, it explains the cycle of life because she's like, it was my job just to be here. And now you've grown up and well, I'm getting old and it's my job's done and I'm not going to be here very much longer. Because mm -hmm. it's interesting because I guess that's one thing. They both kind of, well, the mom doesn't die in Love You Forever, but um, it's insinuated that she's getting very old and she's probably on her last legs. So in yeah, both of absolutely. them, mortality, right? They're very close to mm -hmm. either dead or close to the end. And actually, I, I mean, I did read this book to my to my daughter tonight. Mm -hmm. and But, you know, my daughter's already a bit older. She's, she's, uh, she's nine years old. 
Uh, but Doug, did you read this book to your your daughter? And like she's uh, she's in kindergarten. And yeah. what what were her thoughts like in terms of mortality? Like did she she get it? I didn't I didn't think she really thought about. Well, yeah, no, she did actually pick up on that. She's like, uh, maybe not the full concept, but she's just like, yeah, the mom looks like she's getting older. Why is her hair getting gray? You know, she was asking those kind of questions. Mm -hmm. So it did bring in. You know, so I don't think she kind of got the idea of, oh, the cycle of life, people. But she's like, she's getting the concept of people get older. Why is the parent getting older? Did the parents change? I think that that came across. So I read it to my eight-year-old about uh, last week. And what I remember from last week is that she doesn't want to enter her teenage years because teenagers are weird. And she's been obsessed with that <laughs> lately about how... <laughs> those kids are weird and I'm going to do weird things when I'm a teenager. Isn't that right? Somehow, How old is she again? She's eight. Okay. And uh, you know, I mean, to, per to perceive yourself as an adult, it's not possible when you're eight. I mean, first, you know, I think, uh, I think oh, I was God. like her in that I was fearful of what it I would be like when I was a teenager. And then when I was a teenager, I was fearful what I would be like when I'm in university. And then when I'm in university, I was fearful what I would be like when I'm an adult. So it's always mm. the next stage in your life that you're worried about rather than the full cycle of this book, mm -hmm. which is why I think like the parent reading it is the one who really loves the ending because they're, they're approaching that part of their life. And the mm. child is seeing it, at least in my situation, the child is seeing it as where do they fit in this story? So that's why it's a good book for anyone at any stage in their life. So I read it to my eight-year-old about uh, last week and what I remember from last week is that she doesn't want to enter her teenage years because teenagers are weird and she's been obsessed with that lately about how <laughs> those kids are weird and I'm going to do weird things when I'm a teenager isn't that right Somehow, how old is she again she's eight okay and uh you know I mean to, per to perceive yourself as an adult, it's not possible when you're eight. I mean, first, you know, I think uh, I think oh, I was God. like her in that I was fearful of what it I would be like when I was a teenager. And then when I was a teenager, I was fearful what I would be like when I'm in university. And then when I'm in university, I was fearful what I would be like when I'm an adult. So it's mm. always the next stage in your life that you're worried about rather than the full cycle of this book, mm -hmm. which is why I think like the parent reading it is the one who really loves the ending because they're they're approaching that part of their life and the mm. child is seeing it at least in my situation the child is seeing it as where do they fit in this story so that's why it's a good book for anyone at any stage in their life mm. so you kind of you're kind of thinking from your perspective like i'm getting older and like i hope my child will rock me as as a you know and comfort me as as when yeah I I've just like th this is this is me right like all the time definitely that you become like a wasp you when you become fifty <laughs> you know I just don't have a cord I don't have a corded phone other, yeah other than but that, everything I'm, else you have like that sweater and the yeah <laughs> you're gonna get all. that hair done that way <laughs> well the hair eighties revival <laughs> it is for me a. a it's a, a larger spectrum book than, than The Giving Tree, for sure. But, you know, there, it's funny how that one article you sent about this book and okay. how the mother, the, the mother is, is actually too intrusive in his life, getting her own ladder. And yeah, that was, I don't know if he's being facetious or serious. If he's being serious, he's obviously had too much time in lockdown. But uh, he, the, I think it was an artist who decided to um, redo the endings to some of the famous books. And one of them was Love You Forever because he felt that she was being, he the mom had boundary issues and she was kind of stalking him and invading his privacy by going into his room, going over all the way to his house and sneaking in when he was sleeping and hugging him. I don't yeah. know. What do you think? Was it joke? He could be joking. It could be serious. Well, I read it as comical because this is yeah. the only part of the book actually in which it's completely far-fetched. I think this is a book for kids. It's not for adults. And it's basically, if you're reading this as a kid, um, it's, 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 it's actually quite good because it's funny. Yeah, exactly. Because it's just the image. And it, but it also reinforces the idea that your, your, your mom will always, or your, your parent will always be there for you, right? Yeah, so we'll I, go the I, extra mile. 
And yeah, I mean, as I remember, I remember reading this book to my kids when I like when I like uh, when they were younger and that that I mean, I always found that picture kind of disturbing. I'm like, that is very odd. But, you know, I, I don't think I don't think Robert Munch meant it that way. I don't think he meant that meant it. It's one of those books that this is a book for kids to yes. so that kids understand the cycle of life. And he's just he's just trying to show he's not trying to show a mother being a weirdo and climbing up people's <laughs> right. windows. He's just trying to show her caring at that yeah. age of the Yeah, life. and I, I think that's why my daughter reacted. My daughter didn't say, oh, daddy, are you going to break into my house when I'm older? She was like, that was funny and silly, you know? Yeah, yeah That's exactly. how she reacted to it. So I, I completely agree with you, Gerald. The book is really for children because even children ask the question, can I live with you when I'm older? Can, do I ever have to move out? Mm -hmm. And right now, the answer, of course, is yes. And it'll always, you can stay with me for as long as you want. But it's them, of course, they don't know this, but it's them that change their opinions when they hit 20 and they're like, actually, I'd like my own space. So or that, that's what you hope. You don't, want, you don't want them to be that like, you know, 40 year old boy that's living in your basement. <laughs> right. So, the, but the, the, it with housing prices, God knows, though. Yeah. <laughs> it just reinforces the notion that you can, the mother, I will always take care of you and I will always love you. And it's unconditional mm -hmm. love. And that's the, really the, the moment yeah. of that. I think yeah, it's a, I, yeah. Yeah. Go I ahead. made that mistake once of telling Kana just like, yeah, probably when you get older one day, when you're like 25 or something, you'll probably want to move out. And she's like, no, no, I have to move out. I'm like, no, no, don't put that, that, that's a very long way away. Yeah. Don't worry. I mean, that's, and, she, and of course she doesn't have that concept of time. She's like, no, 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 I want to stay with you. I don't want to leave. I'm like, oh, yeah, boy. You, you, know. you don't, in my situation, I never had to say what you said. I would just, yeah. Jada was just like, I don't ever have to leave, right? I'm like, no, you can stay as long as you want because it's yeah. comforting. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's yeah, actually yeah. telling, it's giving actually, them a deadline is, is, is scary for them. Oh, 18 no. and you're out of the house. Yeah. You know, it's funny because kids, one of the things about young kids that I find the funniest is their conception of time is yeah, exactly. so skewed. It's like, it's like the difference between a hundred years, a million years and last year, like is, it doesn't make any sense to them. It's all the same, right? They have no concept of it. So it's really funny to talk to them. Don't you that. remember that summer used to feel like a full year? Yeah. Like I thought, yeah. I thought we had one year of school and one year of summer. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> That's right. I mean, I remember like it, like like a one year seemed like forever, right? Yeah, it's so yeah. true. And now it's just months just fly by. You're like we're halfway through February already. Especially in a right. pandemic where you don't leave your house. <laughs> yeah. So, Daryl, on a scale of uh, one to ten, what would you give the book? I would give it a ten. I think it's a, a easy, straightforward book. I think it's a great book for parents. Uh, it's a comforting book for kids. It's a very easy book to read. The only problem is that the kids expect you to sing that song and I have a bad voice. So, and Douglas, what do you think of the book? I think it's great. Yeah, it's a, it's a simple message, but it's presented so eloquently, um, elegantly. Um, and I think there's the right amount of humor to balance the kind of really intense message about people passing on in the cycle of life. So I'd give it a very high mark. Yeah. Like, and have both of you read a lot of Munch books before? Oh yeah, I've read a lot of them. As a kid, yeah, I think so. I have a treasury that... of their books and um, I've read them to my kids. Because yeah. I, I found this to be less whimsical than his other books. This is more reality based. <laughs> I guess Most of his books for... are kind of fantastical and like, um, they're, you know, just weird things happening. But this one was more, yeah, it's more cycle of life, kind of yeah. down to earth kind of. Thing. Yeah, and the artwork's always excellent. Actually, this yeah. one, again, his artwork's a little more... Or she I mean, not his artwork, but the artwork of the book is a little more realistic and contained compared to his other ones. Give it a 10 out of 10. I think it, it should be in every parent's library. It is a straightforward message, but it's one, one with a lot of heart.